I want to talk about my best friend, uh, Ruby Falls, who is uh, my uh, country music singer friend. Uh, we were friends back in the 70s. She died early uh, of an aneurysm. And yesterday was Blackout Tuesday, and we featured her music um, all day yesterday on my Instagram account. And uh, on Twitter, my other friend, O.B. McClinton. They were both um, country music singers and very good friends of mine back in the 70s. And um, I don't ever recall not knowing that we're all God's babies. And this has been very hurtful to me um, this week uh, to see uh, all the things that... Um, have been forced on the black community. People of color have been marginalized far too long. And I grew up in the 60s, and uh, I never will forget the day that Martin Luther King was shot in Memphis, and what a sad, sad day that was. My mother was a very good Christian woman, and she raised us to, uh, with the scripture, and that God is no respecter of person, and that we're all equal in the sight of God. And I've always believed that. And I was working in Canada, in Calgary, one summer. Uh, and on my day off, I remember I was really, really, really sad and homesick because I was there by myself working, doing a play for three months. And I remember really missing Ruby for some reason. And I had written about it in my journal. And I don't know why I wanted to see her so bad that day. And... Um, uh, when I got back home, uh, I asked my brother Floyd and two or three people, I said, has anybody heard from Ruby? Um, and they said, we didn't want to tell you, Stella, but she died while you were gone. And we knew you couldn't come home, so we didn't tell you. And I looked in my journal, and the day that I had been so homesick to see her and talk to her was the day that she went home to be with the Lord. She was uh, barbecuing in her backyard and had a headache and ended up in, in the hospital at Vanderbilt University Hospital and and she died that night as a very young woman but we learned so many things together and we uh, had small children and we were living in the same apartment complex and that's how we got to know one another and we traveled a lot together and I got her uh, with my agent Joe Taylor was my agent at the time and I just thought she was so talented and she uh, worked as a um, secretary through the week and then she would work out studio time just as I had done for my first uh, hit record I had done the exact same thing but she was a receptionist at 50 states um, uh, record company and then they would let her go in the studio and record and um, anyway uh, I asked Joe if he would uh, see if he could start booking her because he was booking me every weekend in these uh, clubs all across the country and I'd fly in or drive to the to the gig and work with house bands and so he said yeah he would try to do that and I waited and waited and I would ask Ruby every week I said Joe get you any work yet Joe get you any work yet and she'd just laugh that laugh that some of us that have grown up with a lot of pain in our lives, we've learned to laugh instead of cry. And she always had the most beautiful laugh, just like uh, O.B. McClinton had the same kind of uh, laugh that is so infectious, but it's a laugh that is born out of pain. And um, she'd just laugh, and she'd say, Stella, you just don't get it. And I'd say, what are you talking about? So one day I went into the office, and I said, Joe, I just stomped in there, and I'm... I've always been the kind of person, I've always been for everybody getting what they want or what they deserve. And I said, Joe, I want to know why Ruby hasn't had any work yet. And he said, Stella, sit down and let me explain it to you. And so he explained to me that the reason Ruby wasn't getting any work because when he told the club owners and people that she was black, that they wouldn't book her in the club. And I didn't understand it. And I was quite upset because I knew that OB, who was also black and a friend of mine, that he was working some of the same clubs I was working or the same circuit. And I said, I don't understand why OB can work in some of these same places I'm working, but Ruby can't. And he said, because she's a female and she's black. And 
I just wanted to share that story because I want people to know that, you know, people have been marginalized for being female, for being uh, a person of color, for their religion, for all kinds of different things, for being born into poverty, um, for having uh, parents that are alcoholics or whatever. And it's wrong to judge and to marginalize someone because uh, nobody has any control over how they're born or who they're born to, and no one has a right to judge you for that or to put you in a box or to choose to decide through your elitism that you're better than someone else. And those are some of the struggles that, that I have watched um, people of color, friends of mine, go through. I know Charlie Pride very well, and he's a wonderful guy, and I'm really happy that Darius Rucker has had so much success, and uh, Mickey Guyton uh, has a song out now. She's a younger artist, uh, country artist, uh, um, a black girl, and her song is called Black Like Me, and um, I think that's her song that's out on the charts now. Uh, but I just want everybody to think about putting yourself in another person's place. And with all these uh, peaceful protests going on and everything, I think we just need to search our hearts and our conscience about, is there anything we can do? Or is there anything we can say? Uh, it's like Jimmy Carter said, silence uh, can be more deadly than violence. And we need to really pay attention. And I guess that's all I need to say about that.